If you sleep like that, one thing that will happen to you is your sleep quota, if you are sleeping for eight hours, it will simply drop to three to four hours just straight away. Just lie down for twelve minutes and do it till the last moment till you fall asleep. You know, there's a North Pole and a South Pole. This means these are the magnetic centers. And you also know the whole land masses, whole continents have been slowly being pulled towards the north, they've been traveling. Why the Himalayas is the… whatever we're seeing, the Himalayan mountain ranges that Manasarovar, you will find seashells in Manasarovar because at some point it was at sea… it was at mean sea level. Today, it is at fifteen thousand six hundred feet. So what transported this lake bed, which was at sea level, to this place is the whole Indian subcontinent is crashing into the Central Asian plate. And this is why the Himalayan mountains are still continuing to grow. This just piling up, it's just a crash. Every year, India is losing about 1.23 centimeters or so. I'm not perfect on the number, somewhere in that range. Every year, India is losing about 1.23 centimeters or something because it's crashing into the Himalayan range and it's piling up. Because the magnetic pull of the North Pole is slowly pulling all the land masses upward. So such a huge magnetic pull where the continents are moving up, that kind of magnetic pull is constantly in enforcement across the globe. Suppose you had a little bit of anemia, if you went to your doctor, what does he prescribe for you? So it seems to be like it's an important ingredient of your blood, yes? So if iron is floating around in your blood, and if I put a very powerful magnet to the top of your head, it is possible that slowly blood may start moving in that direction, isn't it? Let's say if it's a very, very powerful magnet, it may start slowly pulling it up because there is elements of iron in the blood. Your body is designed like this, that your heart, which is the pumping station of the circulatory system, is three-fourths of the way up, not halfway down, because it is difficult to pump against gravity, easier to pump towards gravity, so it's placed here. Generally, all the pipes that are flowing down are larger ones, what is going up are much finer ones. As it goes up here, they're almost hair-like so minute that the circulatory system in your brain is such that if one extra drop enters there, hemorrhages will happen. People have strokes. So now you were like this, now you went like this. Already there is a little bit of imbalance in the system because heart was pumping, calculating the gravitational resistance. Now suddenly there's no gravitational resistance, you became like this and now you put your head towards the north. Slowly it gets pulled towards your brain. So one thing that could happen to you is you could have disturbed sleep. If you put your head to the north and sleep, you could have disturbed sleep, all kinds of dreams happening. If you are in your old age, it is possible that you can have a stroke or you could just die in your sleep. It's very much possible. Not that if you sleep one day, you will fall dead. Every day, every day, every day, if your bed is arranged that way, that every day you are sleeping, put your head to the north, you are asking for trouble. Some kind of trouble, we do not know what kind of trouble you will get, that depends on the strength of your system. If it is weak, very weak, you may fall dead or you may get a stroke. 
or you may just get disturbed sleep, you may just have nightmares or during the day you act funny. So many things will happen because excess circulation is happening in the brain when it should not be happening, simply because you put your head to the north. So in case you go to South America, then you should not put your head to the south. If you went to Australia, you should not put your head to the south. You should… you can put it to the north, out there. In the northern hemisphere, you do not put your head to the north. East is best, northeast is okay, west is all right. South, if you must, north, no. Tonight before you go to bed, spend at least twelve, fifteen minutes reminding yourself, you're neither this body nor this mind. Just lie down and just remind yourself, this body is not really you. Do you know, in about… if you live for about sixty years, you're… on an average most human beings are eating anywhere between eleven hundred to fourteen hundred tons of food. So that means, even what you think is my body is not this, it's changing every day. New input is happening and old things are going away. So fourteen hundred tons, you don't have to carry that much of weight right now. So obviously, what you have as a body right now is just a transient amount of food and soil, isn't it? Hello? So what you think is mine also is not it, it is just all the time changing. So at least try this much. What is my body is not me. What? I think is my mind is not me. It is mine right now for use, but it's not really me. Just… if you're not able to do it, just link it to your breath. Inhalation, I am not the body. Exhalation, I am not even the mind. Just lie down for twelve minutes and do it. Till the last moment, till you fall asleep. This is something you must notice. Most human beings, when I say most, I'm very generous with the percentage, ninety-nine percent. Ninety-nine percent of the human beings never notice that moment when they're slipping from wakefulness to sleep. They will simply go off like that. If they're alert, they cannot sleep. But there is a way to sleep in an alert manner. If you sleep like that, one thing that'll happen to you is, your sleep quota, if you're sleeping for eight hours, it'll simply drop to three to four hours just straight away. Now that moment when you're passing from wakefulness to sleep, if you can still be conscious that I'm not the body and I'm not the mind, believe me something remarkable will happen. Why does one person need… Uh, well by prescription these days, uh, eight hours? And why another person can do with half of that? See one thing is, as we already went through, the very physical body that you carry is just the food that you've eaten, isn't it? But if you eat right and do a certain things with your body, you see very effortlessly within three to four weeks you can drop your sleep quota anywhere between two to three hours. One and a half to three hours very easily you can drop if you just eat consciously and just learn to sit properly, you know, just the posture, your geometry of the body and what goes into the system. If you just manage these two things, you'll see sleep quota will just come down like that. At least forty to fifty percent, the food that you eat must be alive. You eat dead food and you want to live, this is a little difficult thing to do, because you have to raise the dead now. <laughs> but if you eat live food, one thing you will see is the state of your mind, your focus and your sleep quotas, and above all, staying awake is not good enough, you have to stay alert, isn't it? How alert you are, how focused you are, only to that extent everything yields to you in this world, isn't it so? If you eat a leaf, a vegetable, a fruit, a nut or a sprout, this is much simpler. If you must eat non-vegetarian food, you must eat that which is furthest away from you. So generally, fish and water life is furthest away from you. So if you must eat non-vegetarian food, fish is the best thing to eat that way.